It is my great honour to be here this morning. Mr. Jose Raul Molino Contero, Minister of Public Security, Panama, and Mr. Jose Aju Prado Canals, the Attorney General, Mr. Julio Moto, the Director of the National Police of Panama, Mrs. Gloria Moreno de Lopez, Director General of the National Customs Authority, and Mr. Keith Williams, President and CEO of Underwriters Laboratories. Distinguished guests, esteemed colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Interpol, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the 2012 International Law Enforcement IP Crime Conference. Now, I realize that some of you have traveled from afar, like I have, and may still be jet lagged. Nevertheless, I am confident that all of us will find our attendance here not only worthwhile but also memorable. Panama is indeed a place where East meets West and the record attendance attests to the leading role of Panama in connecting people with its vibrant economy and the Panama Canal and more importantly the warm hospitality we have all received. Now a recurring theme of every IP con crime conference has been how we can work together nationally and regionally to prevent and disrupt what transnational criminals do. These unrelenting criminals are well organized. They systematically manufacture and distribute counterfeit and pirated goods worldwide without regard for the effects their actions have on unsuspecting consumers. This operational annual intellectual property conference has therefore been occurring since 2007. And since then, Interpol is always impressed with the commitment from a wide range of public and private partners who are jo joining efforts to tackle counterfeiters everywhere on the globe. Interpol is therefore delighted to have the privilege of co-hosting this milestone conference, the first in Central America with the Policia Nacional de Panama. Panama has been an Interpol member country since 1958, and Interpol considers the Policia Nacional de Panama as one of its valued partners. Minister, Attorney General and Police Director, your leadership and determination to place Panama at the forefront of international efforts and to make a meaningful impact on this dangerous crime is very much appreciated. We also acknowledge the work, the wonderful work of the customs, as we know many containers pass through Panama. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to the underwriters laboratories for their steadfast and dynamic support, not only towards the conference, but also the Interpol Intellectual Property Rights Program. Indeed, yesterday, we had a very fruitful meeting with the general counsels and brand protection managers of a number of companies who were brought together by UL. Now, please allow me to illustrate our outreach and successes this year and you will see the wide and diverse geographical spread of the challenges facing us. As of this month, Interpol can proudly speak of five international operations in Africa, Central Europe and Central America. Operations Ops On, targeting counterfeit and substandard food, was deployed in 10 Western European countries. Then, Operation Tonse followed, focusing on counterfeit products in five countries in Eastern Africa. In April, Operation Maya, a transnational IP crime operation, was deployed in 11 Central American countries. Then came the month-long Operation Black Poseidon in May, in which five Central European countries took part. This saw 1,700 interventions at commercial locations like markets, 
ports and airports. The operation involved law enforcement working with prosecutors, customs and intellectual property crime experts. After our phenomenal success with the sheer volume of interventions, arrest of 1,400 individuals and the seizure of 7.3 million items worth of traffic goods valued at 122 million euros from Operation Poseidon, we did not stop there. And certainly not the last for this year, in July we carried on with Operation Mercat, which was jointly coordinated with the World Customs Organization. This covered seven southern African countries and focused on illicit alcohol, cigarettes and tobacco products. In all, our successes this year for IP crime are seizures of counterfeit pirated illicit goods valued at over 155 million euros and with the arrest of over 1,700 suspects. Now, these global operations involve 27% or 51 Interpol member countries from different regions or sub-regions. While each of these countries differed in terms of systems, processes, language and culture, they were all united by their experiences and faced the same destructive threat from IP crime. Our common aim is to, provide, to create and preserve a safe environment for individuals, families, communities, businesses and governments. And we must each do our part in our respective countries for a collectively safer world. The manufacture and distribution of counterfeit and illicit products clearly takes place on an industrial scale because we find the same counterfeit and illicit product types in every region. Illicit trade, including tax evasion and diversion fueled by corrupt practices, is an ever-present feature. Worse, this illicit trade, which often seriously injures and even kills members of the public, is conducted with a complete disregard for the health and safety of consumers. Clearly, individual safety is not the business or an interest of transnational organized criminals. These operations consistently confirm that counterfeiting and piracy are just two components of a much larger transnational organized criminal activity, which is trafficking in illicit goods. Trafficking in illicit goods is a generic term used by Interpol to describe all types of illicit trade. It includes various types of intellectual property infringements, environmental crime, illegal trade in natural resources, trade in substances that cause health or safety risks, the smuggling of excisable goods, as well as a variety of illicit financial flows. This complex yet diverse situation demands an even more comprehensive global partnership response to firmly focus on the transnational criminals responsible for these activities. They effectively act as commodity brokers by manipulating any illicit product to generate significant profits regardless of the consequences. And we cannot discount the fact that some of the money could go into terrorist organizations as today we remember the 11th anniversary of the tragic uh, situation, uh, the tragic circumstances that occurred in New York and Pennsylvania. Now, we are thankful for the external investments into the Interpol Fund for a Safer World, which has enabled Interpol to counter these crimes. It has led to an expansion of the proven IP crime model to all types of trafficking in illicit goods. An immediate benefit is the introduction of a mentoring program for senior police investigators in all aspects of trafficking in illicit goods. And this is to ensure good investigation skills are widely available in member countries. The cadre of mentor officers will acquire specialist knowledge and skills during integrated training and operational intervention deployments in their own country and a period of attachment to the Trafficking in Illicit Goods program. 
The process has begun today with the attendance of 50 police and customs officers representing every Interpol region to maximize benefits derived from collective knowledge and expertise. Now, in the context of training, I am particularly proud of the partnership between Interpol and Underwriters Repositories, which has resulted in the creation and delivery of the online International IP Crime Investigators College, or double IPCIC. On successful completion of the 14 core modules, students receive a double IPCIC certificate endorsed by Interpol, certifying that they have successfully completed a course on professional studies on the investigation on transnational and organized intellectual property crime. The certificated course recognized by Interpol sets international standards and provides IP crime professionals with evidence of specialist awareness and learning on the subject of transnational organized IP crime. Well, on that note, all that remains is for me to thank each and every one of you for your commitment to this important issue. Please make most of this conference and especially the operational workshops. I trust you will enjoy this unique opportunity to exchange your knowledge and experiences with subject matter experts and other like-minded IP crime professionals from around the world. Personally, I have found the time I spent with you over the past few years most rewarding and enlightening. Though this will be my last engagement with you as President of Interpol because my term ends in November, I hope to be able to carry on contributing to this community of practitioners in any way I can. Together, we really can make a difference here in the Americas and around the world. Thank you and muchas gracias.